Whoa, you know things are starting to get dire out there when you start hearing stories like this. I was even shocked to hear this one. And thanks to Steve for sending me this story. This is how you know people are really broke, guys. Because 22% of people right now who are buying alcohol are using buy now, pay later. How that's even a thing, how that's even possible that somebody can use buy now, pay later to buy alcohol is completely beyond me, but that's exactly what's happening right now. So not only are people using buy now, pay later to buy alcohol, but they're also making smaller purchases, but more frequently, suggesting that they're trying to space it out. They're trying to uh, you know, buy less, but they still end up consuming the same amount and probably end up paying more because with everything, when you buy in bulk, you always pay less and that includes alcohol. So people who are doing this are just putting themselves once again deeper into debt. And this is according to a huge alcoholic beverage company called Constellation Brands. They're saying that we're seeing more trips to the store but less purchasing per trip than we used to see. Which simply means people are being a little more careful about what they do given the inflationary environment that exists. Hmm. I guess inflation is still a problem, right? I thought we beat that. Well, apparently not. I mean, that's what it's coming down to, guys. People are getting so desperate to feel a buzz that they're willing to go into debt over it now. I mean, that's just unbelievable. But it's not just alcohol, guys. That's the, that's the sad thing. It's everything. Take a look at this chart here that shows all the other purchases that are being made right now with buy now, pay later. Buy now, pay later is the orange line. The credit card installments is the dark blue line. And you can see people are putting all these things on credit more than ever, you know? Alcohol, actually the number of people uh, buying alcohol with credit cards is higher than buy now, pay later. But you have clothes, health and beauty, appliances, consumer electronics, sporting goods, home furnishings, building and gardening, auto parts, books, music and hobbies. Now most of those things are not essentials to you know keeping a roof over your head. It's not the rent, it's not the mortgage, it's not repairs for the house, it's not food, but it's things like sporting goods and consumer electronics and alcohol and books and music and hobbies. Stuff that people don't need but they want and that's what people are going into debt over right now. But it seems like the only hope we have for this changing is the actual lenders and banks shutting off people's credit cards and shutting down lines of credit in order so people cannot borrow anymore. And that's exactly what's happening because as the delinquencies continue to go up on all forms of credit, banks are now granting fewer credit lines to people. And that's because all stages of delinquency rates now exceed pre-pandemic levels for the first time, guys. This is for credit cards. This is for car loans. This is for uh, buy now, pay later. Every type of uh, loan that people get, you're now seeing an uptick in delinquencies to the point where lenders are gonna have to step in. I mean, just the credit cards alone, guys, the delinquency rates now are the highest levels that we've seen since 2012. In 2012, they were 2.76%. Right now, they're 3.19%. So it's quite a bit higher. It's not just a little bit higher, it's a lot higher. And according to recent research, they found out that only 33% of people that have a credit card pay off the credit card in full each month, which means that the other 66% of people are carrying a balance, guys. How is that a good thing? That is not where people want to end up financially, but that's what everyone's doing. And we see what they're buying. You know, they're buying a lot of stuff that people simply just don't need, unfortunately. Then you have all the experts and economists saying, well, don't worry because, you know, we saw delinquency rates for all forms of debt go way below normal levels during the pandemic, so it's natural for it to start bouncing back. Well, I get the logic of what they're saying, but at the same time, think about this, guys. People got more free money during the pandemic than probably any other period in American history, guys, which gave people the chance or the opportunity to turn their lives around permanently, depending on how much you got and what you did with the money. But apparently, most people didn't do that. They decided it would be a better idea to just blow it all on stupid things and get actually further and further and deeper and deeper into debt. One bank analyst says that, well, rising delinquencies aren't a big deal because we have unemployment under 4%, which means that Americans will continue making pay payments so long as they're employed. Okay, well, what happens when they're not employed? And that's typically what we see happen in a recession and we see, we see unemployment rates go up. And right now some banks are, you know, 
basically flashing warning signals. They're saying that Capital One Bank and Ally Financial, they face some of the biggest risks right now with delinquencies. And it's going to affect their bottom line, guys, because they're expecting a lot of people defaulting on all types of loans that they put out, including credit card loans. The only good news is, is the banks are seem to be prepared for this because they literally have billions of dollars in reserves because they're anticipating these delinquencies. These are anticipating people not paying their bills. But in turn, what they're going to do to help stop the bleeding is they also plan on cutting people off, guys. You're going to see a lot of people get their credit lines shut down or cut in half or whatever in order to slow down the losses from these lenders. Because if you think they're just going to sit back there and, and take it, while people could just get away without paying their bills, they're not gonna let that happen. You have to remember, just like insurance companies, banks are in it for the big profit, okay? And if you are not putting money in their pocket and you're taking it out, you can rest assured they will drop you just like insurance companies, especially right now with all the economic uncertainty circulating out there. And you have other analysts out there saying, listen, this is directly tied to the fact that so many people are carrying large amounts of household debt, period. That's why you're starting to see the delinquencies go up. So people who are defaulting on these loans are people that have uh, student loans, the people that have auto loans, people that have mortgages, people that have all sorts of things, guys. Basically, the more in debt you are, then the more likely candidate you are right now to be delinquent in one of those payments, which is not really a shocker. And it also shows you just how people live their lives. You know, they live completely based on debt, which in some ways you can't blame them because this is now a debt-based society. Our entire government, everything is based on debt now. And the entire world is living off of debt right now. Let's face it. And with car loans, it's way worse, actually. It's way worse than the credit card delinquencies. You have the amount of people who are 60 days or more delinquent right now at 6.11%, which is the highest level we've seen since 1994, guys. That was 30 years ago. And while all this is happening, you have our government and our leaders, you know, sitting there worried about Mickey Mouse things like taking away people's gas stoves. This is a story that I covered well over a year ago, I think, when I first heard about it that the government was looking at banning gas stoves, okay? Well, it just came out recently that they're not actually gonna be banning gas stoves. What they're gonna be doing is they're gonna require all brand new appliances, electric or gas, to be more energy efficient. But the funny thing is 97% of gas stoves in existence right now already meet these energy standards. So people that have gas stoves really don't have anything to worry about. And they're really targeting electric stoves right now. And what they want is they want electric stoves to use 30% less energy than they use today, all while having the same level of features. And of course, they had to mention in here that President Biden doesn't want to take away everybody's gas stove because they have to get some brownie points in there for him for the election cycle coming up. So they want to make it crystal clear that Biden is not in it for your gas stove. He doesn't want to take that away from you. Just in case you were on the fence out there, anybody who doesn't know who to vote for. But seriously, guys, does anybody think that having a 30% more efficient electric stove is really going to move the needle for you right now with your monthly budget because they're saying their number one goal here with this is they want to lower the cost for American families by delivering more energy efficiency to people's households. Like what? You're telling me that going after gas and electric stoves right now is going to be the end all be all for people's monthly budget? Well, it was funny that I read this because I remember that my electric company, FPL, here in Florida, will give you a breakdown or an estimate of what's being used the most in your neighborhood, okay? This is not like my electric bill, but this is like, in general, what your neighbors use the most for with electricity, okay? And take a look at this graph here. Number one thing, water heating. Number two, lighting. Number three, always on, so things that are always plugged in and kind of turned on, you know? Number four is cooling. I'm surprised that's not higher on the list. The AC is always running here in Florida because it's hot. You got refrigeration, electronics, you got laundry and cleaning, miscellaneous, and all the way at the bottom here, right before heating, of course, because we don't really need heat here in Florida, is the kitchen. And it's estimated that people in my neighborhood use about $6.24 
on their kitchen every month, which suggests people aren't really breaking the bank right now with using the electric stove, guys. I have an electric stove and I cook all the time, and clearly that's not breaking the bank for me. I know actually the number one thing that bumps up my electric bill is the, the air conditionings. That's why I'm surprised this isn't higher on the list. But this is proof right here that this is such a Mickey Mouse thing for the government to be concerned about. Meanwhile, nobody can pay their bills. And to make matters worse, this new law is not going to go into effect until 2028. That's so far away. That's like basically doing nothing you know that's what i'm so sick of with government in general is the things that they do the policies they make seem to have zero effect on our everyday lives in terms of benefiting us you know but they have no problem raising taxes so instead of figuring out how to get us off this debt-ridden economy and get us back to normal, get back onto some sort of gold standard or something that's going to turn things around, they're worried about people saving $1.87 per month on their electric bill. That's 30% of the $6.24. It's a complete joke, guys. It really is. But one reason they decided to change their mind, by the way, from banning gas stoves to just making sure they're more energy efficient from now on, which they basically already are, according to this report, is there was a huge uprising of people backlashing against this and protesting it, okay? So we should do the same thing when it comes to our government wanting to eliminate gas-powered cars, guys. Everybody who's against driving an electric car, they want to take it away, should see the same level of protest out there for this. And I think the only reason we haven't yet is because Nothing has become mandatory yet, but that wasn't the case either with the gas stove and there was a big uprising. But I think that's because it affects even more people, right? Like everybody has a stove, no matter if you live in a house, an apartment, wherever you live, you have a stove. So this literally affects everybody, whereas not everybody has a car. But to try to force all these electric cars onto people right now is a joke because we know for sure the infrastructure is not there, the technology is definitely not ready for it to go mainstream. You know, I did a full video about this the other day, so I'm not going to rant about it too much here. But interestingly enough, ever since that video came out, I saw a video from CBC Canada, which probably a lot of you guys saw too, and they did a th big thorough test and they drove a Tesla, by the way, in the winter in Canada, showing all the problems that are happening up there with it. Everything from the car not being able to get charged, from people not getting anywhere close to the range that was promised. That's a huge problem with all the electric cars, including Teslas. They visited 12 different charging stations and seven out of the 12 they couldn't charge the car, guys. Imagine going to a gas station 12 times and only being able to fill up five out of the 12 times. That's insanity. And they want this to be the standard right now. And they also talked to a guy in this video that bought, I think it was a Hyundai electric car. Don't quote me on that. But it was a new electric car that he bought and it just stopped working one day, took it into the dealership and They've had the car for over a year now because they could not figure out what was wrong with it. And when they finally did, they said, oh, it needs a new battery. And they couldn't get the battery on the car for over a year. So what did they do? They gave the guy a gas powered car as a replacement. And the guy bought the electric car because he thought he was going to be saving a bunch of money not having to pay for gas because it's probably more expensive in Canada. This guy's been saving all the receipts for all the gas that he's put in the car and he wants restitution. You know, he wants all of the money paid back that he's paid in gas for this car because he bought an electric car for a reason and now he's, he doesn't even want the car back. But if you're somebody out there that doesn't want to be forced to drive an electric car one day, there needs to be a same level of uprising against this, like them trying to take away your gas stove, guys. People should have the choice. Let the fair market economy make the decision. You know, if enough people want to buy an electric car, they will. We, won't, we don't need to have government subsidies. We don't need laws forcing people to do so. It will just naturally happen on its own. And people are always asking for good news on the channel, guys. Well, how about this for good news? Rent prices continue to go down as of December of 2023. Now, they only dropped an additional half a percentage point, but almost every month for the past six months, they've been dropping a half a percentage point here, quarter percentage point there, and it's leading to 
the rent coming down, okay? The rent is still too damn high, <laughs> but it's coming down. So that is the good news. And the reason for this is because of all the new inventory. There have been so many new apartments being built and being delivered throughout the year. Everybody thinks that rent prices are gonna continue going down from this because they're not slowing down with the new construction. So according to realtor.com, this is the eighth consecutive month now, we've seen a decline in rent prices. So they might not be big declines, but they are all adding up to a much bigger decline over a long period of time, which is what we need to see. But the rent is still too damn high because no matter which way you slice it, rent is still 22% higher than it was pre-pandemic. But the only thing that sucks right now is if you want to get a good deal on rent guys there is this strong possibility that you might have to move because people who are getting the best deals on rentals are people who are shopping around for a better deal elsewhere because if you're a landlord and you have you know five good paying tenants you don't want to lower their rent you know especially with expenses going up as a landlord so i've never really seen anybody's rent go down it usually only goes up just like taxes and insurance but if you've been a good tenant you've been responsible you pay on time you keep the place nicely it would definitely be worth it for you to reach out to your landlord and say hey you know i've been a good tenant i take care of this place i found a better deal for 200 dollars a month less across town and um, i was thinking about taking it do you think you can lower my rent down to this price point and maybe even just a hundred dollars a month will be enough to let you stay because you got to factor in even if you're going to pay two hundred dollars a month less in rent somewhere else you're going to have to pay for the cost to move which is probably going to eat up most of that savings so even if you can get half of the reduction that you could get by moving it could still end up being worth it to stay where you are but you do need to negotiate and you do need to shop around if you want to get this but they've really been ramping up the building guys in fact um, in 2023, we saw about 556,000 rental units delivered into the housing market, which is the most that we've seen in 40 years. So that is a huge plus. And we're expecting another 444,000 to come online this year. And I think that's underestimated because I remember multiple reports from 2023 saying that there was over a million new construction units in the pipeline just for rentals alone. And only half of those have been delivered so far. So the actual amount of rental units that could get delivered this year could be far higher than this. And even if you're somebody looking to buy, this helps you guys because when rent prices come down throughout the country or in your area, that's gonna help lower home prices as well. Because what it does is it creates a lot of competition, first of all, so people who might buy may end up renting because they find it such a much better deal as a renter than buying, first of all. And let's face it, a lot of people cannot afford to buy at today's prices and rates and renting is the only option anyhow. But just the fact that people have more choice helps open up the housing market, guys. Ultimately, what it's gonna do is it's gonna cause more and more listings to continue piling up on the market as more people choose to rent versus own because there's no disputing the fact that rent is a lot cheaper right now than it is to own. Even though it's gone up a lot, it's still a lot cheaper. And people are looking for every single way possible to you know, pinch a penny, you know, look what we started off with here. People are now using buy now, pay later for alcohol and ridiculous things, you know, putting on the charge card sporting goods and buy now, pay later for music and books and all this crazy stuff. And I'd be willing to bet that most people doing that are gonna be looking to rent rather than to own. That way they continue to free up more money to spend on all that useless crap. But for everybody who says I never give any good news, it's not true. That's good news that the rent is coming down no matter which way you slice it. I don't see how there's any bad news in that. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't want to wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here. And I'll see you in the next one.